So while talking to Laurent a few weeks ago about you know preparing for this talk, he was he mentioned uh, he's he was a pioneer in the in the back uh, back then with the first versions of digital books and e-books and uh, apparently the first model weighed over over a kilogram and uh, I'm not sure whether he'll be yeah. referring to that at all but uh, Laurent. Lauren Picard, everyone, from, uh, from Google. Welcome. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thanks a lot for having me today. This is my first time in Greece ever, so thanks a lot for your hospitality already. Um, we are going to talk about machine learning again, but what's nice is that you've seen a few fields of machine learning, a few, many examples already, and my talk is pretty much uh, a complement to that, so uh, it fits very nicely. Um, my name is Laurent Picard. As you can hear, uh, I am French. Um, as I was told before, um, I was an e-book pioneer in a previous life. It kept me busy for 17 years. Uh, I've launched uh, eight uh, hardware generations of e-book devices. Eventually, I came to work on the web, of course, because devices included Wi-Fi with, at some point. The first, the, yeah, the first e-book device I, I worked on weight one kilogram, right? Uh, it was a big iPad. It was in 1999. Okay, so now it's something like 100 grams. Um, two years ago, I changed. Uh, I changed everything, or uh, not everything, but my, my professional uh, uh, goals. And I decided to focus on cloud technologies. Last year, as a logical step, I decided to focus also on Python, uh, which I love. Um, if I had worked on Python before, and especially in my previous life, I'm pretty sure I would have saved months of work. Uh, I have a C++ background. And um, yeah, and so cloud technologies and Python and then scientific background, I came uh, to f necessarily to work with machine learning somehow. I am not an expert. So my goal today, um, and I'd like to start uh, with this, is to show you that this is really, really what I feel like whenever I see machine learning, right? I feel like seeing magic or a magic trick. Uh, my goal today is to show you that you can do a lot yourself, okay, um, with what is existing today. Maybe you will show a little bit of what is coming. If you scratch a little bit, there's, there is no magic. You can do it yourself, right? This is just technology. Okay, a quick introduce, introduction to machine learning. You've seen uh, a few examples. So machine learning, basically, uh, you have data and you want to get information out of this data, right? Uh, somehow. Um, how does it work? So, at the origin, uh, the experts have been trying to mimic the way uh, we think our brain works. It was in the 80s with deep learning, okay? AI is older than that, but machine learning, I'm using machine learning. It should, I should be using deep learning, but I think machine learning is the term that is going to be and generalized for everyone. Okay, so uh, they've been trying to mimic uh, our brain with synapses and so on, and so they had this idea of neural networks, right? How does it work? We, for that, we need to use many examples. It's exact, exactly like with my kids, right? I show them by example uh, what I want, how it works, how it should be done, and, and we can learn a lot from this method, right? And surprisingly, the result, the magic, is that we manage to solve problems. Um, there's a nice coincidence. This week, uh, I think it was two, two days ago, the Alan Turing Award was given to three people, three researchers. And actually, so the, the Alan Turing Award is like the Nobel Prize for computing science, right? Nobel Prize, so that's not uh, nothing. And so these, th these three people started actually to work, to, to design, to imagine neural networks in the 80s. So 40 years after, they, are, they, they get a, a lot of recognition for that. So everything we see today is a little bit thanks to them, 
and also thanks to the computing power that we have today. So 10, 10 years ago, we didn't have that power, that computing power, so a lot of things were impossible. Now we have the theory, a lot of research papers, algorithms, neural networks, and computing power, and we can do a lot with that. So basically, how does it work? We need samples, so we all love uh, to use uh, cats and dogs samples. So basically, you have samples, and you, you, you indicate the result that you're expecting if you show a cat picture, right? And the experts will build with that a neural network. It will create connections with mathematical models, right? And once you've done that, this is called the training phase. You have trained your model, you can use it. And you can use it by presenting new pictures, right? new input. And here it will predict that this is most likely to be a dog because it has recognized some features that it learned before. Okay. To give you an idea, so this is a graph showing the number of projects at Google using a machine learning model. As you can see, this is an exp exponential use, right? And you can already show, sh show that in a few apps, a uh, few solutions, for instance, Gmail. Gmail, as, as of today, if you start to type a sentence in some languages, then it will propose you to finish the sentence. What is surprising and, and magic for me is that sometimes the sentence is better than the one I wanted to write. So, and I just have to type tab, and that's it, it's done. Also, when you receive an email, uh, you have three suggestions. You can do a quick answer, just one click, if it's two or three words, and it works pretty well too, okay? So this is just to show you how, how important that is. If we take a step back, how can we benefit from machine learning today? So we talked about the experts. Experts are here. They will always be here to imagine something new, something innovative, right? They've been working for decades uh, on AI, and machine learning is just exploding, and this is just the beginning. But there are not that many experts, right? You need to invest some time to become an expert. So if you're a developer, you can actually integrate machine learning into your solutions. You can use APIs. These APIs are existing machine learning models that you can use right away. In a couple of hours, you can integrate that into your solution. But these APIs are answering generic needs, right? You will get generic uh, responses, answers, results. And as you can see, there's a gap in between. And we don't have enough experts, even though all students of the world today would decide to do machine learning, we will, I guess, we will still uh, never have enough. So there are new techniques all, all today called AutoML techniques. We, um, Pantelis mentioned them, um, where you are actually able, thanks to AutoML techniques, to build a model without knowing anything in AI. So today, what are I want to show you is to show you what you sorry what you can do uh, with machine learning APIs and when, what you can do with AutoML. So first with the API, so uh, we call them building blocks. Building blocks are like Lego bricks. It works. You can actually take one brick and integrate that into your solution. So this is the, the Google uh, family today. Of course, all, everything that I'm going to show you, uh, you can extrapolate to other uh, companies. I know these products, these solutions. So, so you will find that almost on a feature-by-feature -feature basis with Amazon, with uh, Microsoft, with IBM, with many other companies that are dedicated maybe uh, to AI, with Nokia, and so on. Okay? But I will illustrate uh, uh, what I want to show you with this solution. So this is the, the, the family I've been playing with. And what you can, you can give as input is text, pictures, videos, and even speech. And as a result, as an output, you get, as I said, either, either information or you, get also your, you can get your input transformed uh, into something more intelligible. OK? So, I very much like to start with the Vision API. With a Vision, uh, so why? Why? Because 
So when I finished my studies in the 90s, I actually learned how to understand the picture or how to try to understand the picture. And at the time, we were trying to detect edges in a picture, okay, and from the edges to try to detect objects. And it didn't work. It worked a little bit, you would use a new picture and it wouldn't work anymore. And machine learning is solving that today. And for me, this is still magical. Uh, so I will show you a few examples for you to understand, memorize what you can do. So if you, for instance, I live in Paris, so this, everybody here can recognize that. A vision model would tell me that. So this is the JSON response that I, I can get from the API. It will tell me that, yeah, this is, uh, you see, uh, this is Paris. Uh, I get the bounded box describing what is most likely to be Paris. There is an Eiffel Tower and I get uh, the GPS location. Okay, good. But it's no big deal. Every, everybody here could, could say the same, okay? So I took a different picture, still with an Eiffel Tower, but this is not in Paris. And here, in less than a second, yeah, I would say, this is not Paris. I don't know where it is, but this is not Paris. The vision model tells me that this is at the Paris Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. It's able to recognize the picture and giving me the location, okay. So I try to see the limit of this. Here I'm still able to, do, to have the same result as the model. So I took another picture um, with the Eiffel Tower from Las Vegas. I flipped the picture, I skewed it a little bit, I zoomed in and cropped the picture. So it's very hard for me Anyone living in Paris in a snap would say this is, uh, yeah, the Eiffel Tower from Paris. The model, the vision model, is not fooled by that and is able to still tell me that this is coming from Las Vegas. So here this is one limit where the machine learning model is doing better than me. Of course, and hopefully, there are uh, still a lot of cases where it's the opposite. So I'm going to use, for the rest of the presentation, Tolkien uh, examples. Uh, as a tribute to Tolkien. So this is a picture from New Zealand. It's called Obiton. This is uh, where the Lord of the Rings movie was shot. And if there are some objects uh, that are really precisely detected, you can get the actual bounding box of them. And you, you've seen uh, earlier with Pantelis that it can, in very dedicated uh, uh, cases, it can also work in real time in videos, right? So here, it's telling me that there's a plant, 65% precision, yeah, a window, it's actually not a window, it's a door, but it's okay, a door for a little bit looks like a window. And there's also a house with 57% uh, uh, precision. This is very hard to do, uh, especially giving, giving a location for objects like this. It works uh, even better if it's a car, a bicycle, a person, and so on. Likewise, if it's not able to give you the exact location of objects, it will give you labels. It will describe you what's in the picture. So it's a different picture from Hobbiton, and it tells me, okay, this is about nature, a tree, it's a photography, there's a woody plant, a sky grass, everything is correct. But it also tells me that uh, there's a block of text, right, right here, and it's English, and it's giving me, so the, there's an OCR, right, but a machine learning OCR, and it's giving me the, the English uh, transcription. It's only making one mistake here. There's a space missing. But what's interesting is that the, the font is a little bit fancy, right? Uh, there are actually stresses, small stresses, three stresses above the, the A, one above the, 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 the O, and the kerning here is a little bit, a little wrong between except and on. So this is why it's making a mistake. But the funny thing is that a few months ago it was making two mistakes on this picture. So hopefully in a few months it won't make any mistake anymore, okay? Because with machine learning you provide more samples and you can get a better quality. It's, it can learn uh, continuously. If there are faces in the picture, it will tell you. It will, it will give you the location in three dimensions uh, of the faces. It will give you the locations of the eyes, the nose, and everything. And also, it will try to detect sentiments. So here, 
it's telling me that this face is likely angry, and this is right. Uh, this is Gollum, and Gollum is always angry. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can have some features also uh, relating uh, to the photography. Uh, likewise, if there's something or someone famous in the picture, it will give me web entities, like labels, but relating to famous stuff that you can find on the web publicly. So this is a, a very rare picture of Tolkien uh, that has been used only once by a Spanish newspaper. So I zoomed in and cropped the picture, but still it's able to tell me that this is about G.R.R. Tolkien, uh, maybe the Lord of the Rings and so on. It's also able to tell me where this picture is coming from or most likely coming from, right? It's able to match uh, even though there are no single pixel in common between the pictures. It's an API, so with an API you do a web request, you get the JSON uh, response. But you can find open source uh, client libraries, and this is the Python one. And what I love with that is the Python simplicity. Uh, with a few lines, you create a client, you provide the content, and you can call the feature you want, here face detection, and then you will have the likelihoods of the different uh, sentiments found in the picture, okay? So I propose you, so those were selected pictures. I propose you to have a quick live demo. Okay, I'm already, okay, I'm very slow. <laughs> okay, so those are pictures that I took. Uh, is it okay, Steve, if I use one of the pictures I took with you this morning? So this is a picture from the keynote this morning. Okay, so it's recognizing two faces. On one of them, uh, there's something on the head, that's correct. Okay, and also, maybe let's check the JSON stream. It's able to tell me that here, it's the open conference written here, right? I have the location. So it can work, of, of course, with many different languages. Um, likewise, um, yeah, so this is a picture I took from the Mount Licabetus, just to try, and it's able to tell me that I am in Athens. Of course, I, I'm removing the metadata from the pictures, just in case. It's not used by default, but just to be sure. Uh, it's telling me it's Athens, and okay, giving me some labels, which all are correct. And here, someone actually, in his blog, posted a similar picture from the Mount Licabetus. And this is why here it's telling me that maybe this, is, this picture is about the Mount Licabetus. Actually, it was taken from the Mount Licabetus. Okay? And maybe one... Yeah, one last example. So, I don't know this person, but <laughs> is very likely joyful, right? Um, if yeah, the description of the picture, I have a gesture. So this part is, is important. Gesture, finger, thumb. Uh, yeah, that's correct. The thumb has been very well identified. And the smile also is very prominent, so, which is good. One funny thing is that with all male politicians, I almost always get a business person because of the suit or the tie. Okay? And here, let me check web entities. Yeah, it might be related to Alexis Tsipras, maybe the Prime Minister of Greece. Okay, so it works uh, pretty well. Okay, let's move on. So you, you've seen what you can do with pictures. Uh, it's a, a big illustration. You can extrapolate to videos. Uh, with video, what you have additionally is the time dimension. So you will be able to have the, the different sequences in the video. And also, as you've seen with people, then you can also have objects and track objects within sequences. Let's have a quick um, illustration of that. So this is a video that was actually indexed uh, with the Video Intelligence API. And here I have the label. So for instance, it's telling me that at the beginning I have a Milky Way. Let me put the sound on, okay? The world is made with tiny bits. With okay, that's correct. Uh, what do I have else? Uh, I have students here. On 
irreplicable, yeah. particular and, you. And you, I have a you will polar, fix something. Like a polar bear. Okay, so you see, you can get a lot of information automatically. Okay, so pictures, videos, but the core of intelligence and what we can process ourselves is text. So there's a big field, uh, especially with Python, uh, which is called NLP, Natural Language Processing. And machine learning models have been able to improve that field a lot. So if I take this sentence from Wikipedia, or almost uh, from Wik Wikipedia, I can analyze the sentence. It will tell me that it's an English sentence. It will give me the type and nature and relationships of all the items in the sentence. I even have the lemmas for, so for instance, I know that was is the verb to be, and I can work with the canonical form of the nouns. Uh, it can also, like in pictures, recognize entities. So it will tell me, for instance, that there are three groups here. The first one in red are persons, so Tolkien is a person. I have an ID to identify Tolkien. It's the same ID as for the picture of Tolkien before, which is pretty cool. Uh, British is mapped to location relating to the United Kingdom, and the three books at the end are works of art, which is correct also, pretty cool. The same sentence can be classified, uh, and here it would be classified under books and literature, 97% sure about it, which is perfect. Okay, and finally, like in pictures, it can try to detect sentiments and detect negative and positive sentences. So I took two different reviews, one from the New York Times, one from a social network for book lovers. The first one is very positive, the other one very negative. And for each sentence, the natural language model will give me a rating between minus one and plus one. And the negative one really come from Pauline's review and the positive ones from the New York Times. And of course, you can have neutral sentences. Okay, so we've seen pictures, videos, text. Here's a sample to how to analyze text and, for instance, analyze sentiments uh, in a movie review. Okay, you see, uh, very simple. You can focus on the results after that. Likewise, so here I won't get into the details. You have all used Google Translate at least once. Um, it's getting more and more powerful. What I could notice before joining Google two years ago, so what I could notice maybe four or five years ago, is that as a French user, the quality uh, went up significantly. And I learned uh, since I joined Google uh, that it was before, uh, because they switched from a statistically model to a pure machine learning model. Okay, once again, the power of machine learning. Then speech. So what can we do with speech? We can trans transcribe it to text from or to text, okay? Um, okay, let's, of course you can index uh, an audio stream. Let me maybe show you um, a quick demo in my browser. What is the temperature in Athens? It's 14 degrees in Athens right now. So what's interesting, it's real, uh, real time. It gives you answers as soon as possible, maybe not the final one. You could see that when I started to pronounce Athens, it gave art and, and corrected it to Athens. Uh, and it also worked uh, with my French accent, so I, I could make my French accent worse, worse and it, it would still work. I, I tried it before, okay? Um, Okay, so now the opposite, text-to-speech. So I've worked with text-to-speech in 2000. I integrated text-to-speech in the first ebook reader. I was very proud. You could press play and it would read the book aloud, but nobody used it. That was because it was a robot talking to you. Uh, there's a machine learning uh, model um, called WaveNet that is able to generate almost human voice. It has been developed by DeepMind, maybe you know them uh, for AlphaGo, uh, AlphaStar now, they are trying to beat um, gaming champions after beating uh, Go champions. Uh, they have research papers if you're interested, okay? Um, it's fascinating, uh, it's the most advanced maybe machine learning model that I, I have seen. It's really uh, 
sounds like a human voice. Okay, I have to go fast. So we've seen what you can do with APIs, so ready to use machine learning models, okay? With Cloud AutoML um, uh, solutions, you will be able to create your own API by using this cloud technology. It will train the model automatically for you. The only thing you have to do is to create training data here, okay? So let me, okay, as of today, uh, you can, this is, this was launched about one year ago, a little bit more than one year ago, you can work with text and images and you will get custom classifications and even custom translations. An example with the Vision API and AutoML Vision. So here are uh, similar pictures. The vis a Vision model will, would give you the same results, right? Those are clouds in the sky. But if you want more specific results, I want to know it's a Cyrus, an Alto Cumulus, then uh, I can use auto ML vision, and for that, the only thing I have to do is to give pictures, to label them, ideally 1,000 of them for each label, but here, uh, Sarah, a colleague from New York, she did a demo with roughly 200 uh, labels, uh, for uh, 200 pictures for e each label. And so then she launched her first training, she got 85% of accuracy, she improved a little bit, uh, she, she made some mistakes, and she also, also launched a, a longer training of three compute hours, and then she reached 92% of accuracy. Here's a visualization where you can see that we are bad with alto stratuses, but very good with cumulonimbuses, okay? You see the, the, the right and wrong results. I tried it, of course, it works uh, very well. Uh, it's a picture I took in um, Poland. I did a little demo, uh, so I would like to end maybe with a demo with you so that we can participate all together. So this is a serverless architecture. What I did is that I created buckets in the cloud for, it's like folders in the cloud, right? And here I have three Python functions. Okay, let's, you can get your phones connected. Um, the demo is called Stash Club. If there's only one rule, if it's your first time, you, mud, you must all get your mustache, okay? So, here is the QR code or the URL that you can use to get connected to the demo. bit.ly slash openattens19 or use the QR code. Okay. I'll give you one more moment. Okay, and you should reach a page like that. Okay, welcome. Let's move to step one. The URL is still here if you need it, bit.ly slash open 19. Let's move to step one. You refresh the page. It will ask you for a nickname, whether you're okay to use the camera, and then you can upload, send me a selfie, try to express an emotion, try to be happy, sad, surprised, uh, okay, hangry, uh, okay, just one, hey. Okay, so the picture is being uploaded, it will automatically trigger a Python function, okay? And you will get, each of you will get the result. So I have the location of the nose and the mouth, so I can do some composition on the fly. Or oh, here, also it, it didn't work here, it should have told me that I'm happy. So here, the threshold, no, it's telling me, uh, I don't think it's, you're happy. Okay, so it's a mistake, you see it's not perfect. Um, but, okay, I don't have enough time, I'm sorry. Let's try, so, oh, I know why. I was in auto email mode, so, in, okay, my mistake. So, I did an auto email um, model too, with pe people sticking their tongues out, people sleeping, and people yawning, okay. Uh, so, my mistake, uh, so try other expressions, or try to, you, to stick your tongue out, uh, sleep or yawn. So let's try to, oh, I'm tired, okay. So, do, so this is to show you that I used generic APIs and then I customized them, them to my own needs. Okay, it's a cold start. Please, please do, do, do likewise, send, send me some selfies. What I'm going to do is to, yeah, to s invite a few guests Okay, hop. Oops. Okay, so it's telling me that I'm yawning. Okay, a last one. 
Okay, do likewise, and we'll check the results. Is everyone, okay, we have a few people with the tongues out, so it works. A few people yawning, maybe, myself. Okay, the zombie, why not? <laughs> so for the zombie, it told me that it is a violent picture. I can have this information, so I blurred it on the fly, okay? And finally, do we have people who can't wait for the coffee? Yeah, a few, a few of you. Okay, so you see, uh, this is very easy to use. Um, come to me uh, during the break. There's a lot to say. If you, have, and if you have questions, I can show you more examples. If you want to become an expert, uh, we've said that yeah, there are many frameworks. One of them is TensorFlow. You can, it's open source. You can install it on your laptop. You can create your own neural network, so you can do a lot more than what you've seen. You can imagine inv uh, invent something new. At some point, you will need uh, cloud um, technologies to train uh, in a few hours instead of weeks, maybe. Okay, this is by far the most popular repo, machine learning repo on GitHub. It's time to wrap up. Here are the pointers if you want to know more. I'm sorry, I'm a bit late. Um, and the slides are public. Okay, you can find them here. Slides bit.ly slash slide dash ML magic. Feel free to send me any feedback. So my goal today was to give you a big overview, quick, quick overview of what you can do as developers. Uh, there's a lot. You have superpowers, right? Uh, with machine learning, you have even more superpowers. And you are Pythonistas, so your superpowers are even stronger. Thanks a lot for having All me. All right, here. with that. Laurent, thank you. Let's look at some questions. We have a few questions before we break for, uh, before we break for, for a coffee. Let's, uh, let's look at some of those. Do you want to pick one? Yeah, so ML algorithms, they've been present for many years. Is there something special that happened in the last few years? First of all, I said at the beginning, it's the computing power. Uh, likewise, we are now building, we, I mean, many companies are building dedicated hardware. If you remember at some point for gaming, we had CPUs and then we needed GPUs, dedicated graphical units. Uh, as of today, there are TPUs, tensor processing units, which are dedicated to the training and also to uh, the prediction. It's, they are able to use a model and give you a prediction as fast as possible. And this is available in the cloud today and tomorrow, in a few, next year, it will be available in your smartphones. All manufacturers are going to integrate TPUs, small, tensor processing units like GPUs in your smartphones. The next uh, version of Android is integrated machine learning. It's learning from you, what you're doing with your phone to optimize the battery life, right? So this is just the beginning. You're going to see machine learning everywhere. Of course, we all have to be cautious as companies, governments, and everything, and even developers. Uh, but this is going to be uh, everywhere. This is really just the beginning. Um, Given that APIs do all the hard work, what's the role of a machine learning engineer data scientist? I didn't say that uh, super, they're going to be super, replaced. Superpowers. Yeah. Actually, you have superpowers. If you, I would say if you are an expert, then you're going to create something new, right? Uh, this is where you have added value. But they are not enough experts. So APIs are there for generic purposes for developers. And AutoML also will let you uh, create uh, models. And I am not an expert. I have never built a neural network in my life, right? But I have created a model, uh, an AutoML vision model, just with samples. And this is something that is filling a big gap. And so experts, so uh, data scientists and so on, are, are going to be able to work with the whole developer team, right? to choose to make the best decisions. OK, you're going to create an auto ML model. I'm going to work on this part. And our two parts will work well together. And we will go all, a lot faster thanks to that. OK, uh, next question. What is the next big thing in deep learning beside the image video recognitions? Uh, so I'm not an expert, but maybe the next big thing uh, are autonomous cars, right? Uh, there are many companies working on that. These cars have already driven millions of hours on actual roads or in simulations. So it will come at some point. Of course, still we have to be cautious. 
Uh, but I, I guess this will dramatically change the, the landscape of our lives because uh, maybe we won't have a, a car for each of us, okay? Maybe we will be able to share cars to have public transport, public cars, right? Could you provide any details on the size? No, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know. Is access to Google APIs open? Can they be used from public orgs? Uh, I'm not sure to understand the questions. Um, it's a public cloud, so if you have an account, you can use the, the API. If you want to make it public, then you can, of course, uh, but I'm not sure that that's the, can they be used from public or so yeah. So, okay, let me give you maybe an example I, want, I, I, I very much like. It's a company in London called ZSL. So ZSL uh, is a charity, and this charity has been working for years on trying to preserve wildlife in the world. So for that, they are putting cameras in wild forests, and they are trying to understand the life that's there, the species that live there, that come or that disappear, right? And for that, they put cameras for six months in the forest, and up until now, they would retrieve the cameras, and they would still have six more months to process the pictures. One camera had more than 100, thousand pictures, so you see with many cameras it's a lot of work. But all these years they have labeled pictures of very specific species. So they have a huge data set of pictures, it's a treasure for them. And thanks to that they have built a, an AutoML vision model. So they, didn't, they just had to use what they did so far. And now they are able, so they still need six months in the forest to take pictures, but whenever they get the camera back, the cameras back, then in a matter of one week, they can automatically process the data and auto-label them with their model, right? And they have opened this model to other charities, to other zoos, and they want to improve the model so other charities are going to be able to provide more data. So this is, this is ag aggregation of human knowledge, right? This is a, t a very huge tool. They are saving almost six months of work now, thanks to, to this kind of solution. Great data. I'm seeing herbivores, carnivores, insectivores. Yeah, but if you, if you look here, those are the actual species, and they are very detailed ones. Fantastic. Our yeah. friends here are, are coffeevores, and they're about to go and get some coffee. Laurent, thank you very much thank for you. your talk. Thank you. Have a good coffee. Thank and, you. And uh, Laurent will be out, out there. You can grab him and talk, talk during the coffee break. And uh, we'll see you back here in a few, in a little while.